Max NG7 AM here yet again for part four. And finally, we get into some of the fun here, uh, beginning the calibration of a B26 RF 2K plus um, legal limit amplifier. And um, just uh, back to um, the creators of this uh, project DHC NAB and DL5 NAM, DL7 NB. And I know Mark um, NU6X has helped out with some of the documentation. So this will probably be one of the shortest videos here. I'm going to focus on steps one through five of the calibration. And I'm assuming that you have a brand new amplifier, uh, RF2K, you know, the B26 RF2K Plus. And you have installed image 55 on your SD card and are able to fire up the amplifier. So um, if you can't start up the amplifier and see things that are on the screen, on the touch screen, you need to resolve that before moving on, obviously, here with these uh, calibration steps. And I have a cat in the room that's yelling here. So go away. Oh, well, that's Clyde. Clyde the cat. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's uh, move on. You, you need to go back and watch video three if you have any questions about the setup. Um, so we're going to move right along here. The first thing I'm going to do is pull up the, uh, the calibration manual. And so as of the time of this video, this is the manual right here for image 055. And this document was um, created as of February 2018. And in the next video, when I go to step six, there's actually a supplement um, update document that I'll get into and I'll explain that. But for this particular video, it's only steps one through five and they're pretty easy. So, I am, let's see, if I've got the right document loaded up here. I think I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. So, uh, again, this is my opinion. This is just my example of how I would calibrate. Make sure you spend time on the forums, go through and double check everything that I'm talking about here. And, um, you know, have fun calibrating the, the amplifier. So we are going to, um, the first two steps right here, we are going to simply turn a couple of the multi-turn pots all the way down, all the way counterclockwise. And so we'll just do that right now. I'm going to, um, turn on a camera that will show that. I mean, this is pretty simple stuff here. Um, so we've got another camera here. I'm going to make me really small down on the corner there. We'll bring this up right here and you'll kind of get a feel for um, me doing that. I'm using a, uh, um, you know, a, a tool that was made for this, but you could use a tiny screwdriver. Just be careful on the PCB. So, Finally, step number one, we're going to go to R1. Oh, I should, first of all, hang on here. I'll just show these on this image right here. Um, let me turn that off. Okay, we're going to R1. R1 is right here. So this is an image on my photo gallery. You can find a link in the description of the video. But we're looking at R1 right here, this multi-turn pot right there. We're just going to turn it counterclockwise 15 turns. And, and then right after that, we'll be doing um, R17, which is right up here. So we'll just knock those two out. Now, these you can't strip these multi-turn pots. So effectively, by just turning it counterclockwise 15 turns, it ensures that it's in that, you know, it's as far as it can go counterclockwise. And on some of the pots, you can actually hear it clicking once you get to the limit of the pot. So um, I'll pop that video back on here. And just, you're going to kind of see me in two places here but I'm going down to R1 get the tool this little tool is nice but boy once you get it in there it stays and then I'm going to simply turn that you can see my hand and so I'm just you know counting and I can you hear that click on you probably can't hear that click but I'm I'm to the limit on this particular pot R1 and I'll get my hand out of the way there and now we're going to go up to R17. R17 is right here. And on the, of course, you can see it labeled on the picture here. See the cursor there? Oh, I've got it covered up, but um, right here. R17 right there. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. Get the tool inserted there. 
and we're going to go counterclockwise. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, going left counterclockwise. I can hear it clicking, but you get the idea. Just at least go 15 turns. Um, and be careful not to. Um, this is so, sometimes you'll see this the pot right above R17 is R18, and it's also labeled as spare. You can see that over in the video here. I'm going cross cross handed here, right there, but it's actually R18. And you shouldn't need to touch that if you do. Um, it's called out in the manual, but let's go all the way counterclockwise and then go clockwise by turns. But you should not need to touch that one right there. Okay, so. Um, we have just, pretty exciting, we just completed steps one and two. So, fun stuff. All right, now we're going to fire up the amplifier for number three. And so I'm reaching over here. If you saw in video three, I don't know if I, oh, you can't, you can't see it there. Let's see. I've got the power um, toggle switch right here um, hooked up. And that cat of mine is like making noise in the background. So I'm going to turn on the amplifier. And we'll hear the relays click as soon as that's done. Get things back over here. And so for this next step, we'll be calibrating the voltage display that you see on the front of the amplifier. And I'll be using VNC to uh, remote into the amplifier because I have the front of the amplifier off. So I'm just repeating some things that were. We're in the third video there. And um, all right. So again, step number three right here. And really what you're doing right here is we're not adjusting the voltage output of the switching power supply and amplifier. We're just adjusting the, the controllers here that show the voltage in real time on the seven inch touch screen display to match the actual voltage that is um, in the amplifier. Oh, and the other thing we're going to have to do is hook up, um, obviously, a uh, digital voltimeter. Voltimeter, a digital voltmeter. And I have, um, let's see, so the amplifier is on. Let me remote into it with VNC. And so, make this smaller up here on the amplifier. And so here's the screen of the amplifier. This is as though you were sitting right in front of it here. So it is um, it is the screen. It's live right here. So right here, uh, you can see I've previously adjusted the voltage. It, it is showing 53.6 volts right down here, if you can see my cursor. But we're going to validate that. And I'm going to hook up my handy dandy, um, just kind of standard leads here to my digital voltmeter and get it turned on. I have a, a camera for that one, I think. And boy, we're, we're getting fancy here. So I'm going to stick it on DC voltage. And I, uh, that's not looking too bad there. You can I think you can see that. Get a little closer there. So I'm also going to just hook up a couple clamps here to the um, meter. Okay, I'm gonna jump around. And then I'm gonna come back here, move this video. We're just tying in right to the. Um, this is the DC power output from the um, switching power supply. We're gonna read the voltage across positive terminal and the negative terminal here. So. I'll be hooking up the voltmeter here, so we should see some voltage there now. And we do. All right. So let's, I'm just going to set this over here right for now. So now in step number three, you can see we use R22. So if we come back here, R22 is, wow, and I've got screens all over the place. R22 is at the top here, right there, okay? Bring this 
back over there. And so again, we're just adjusting the controller, the, the voltage display to match exactly the voltage output on the uh, DC switching power supply. Okay. And I'll I'll just move it off here. So we're going up to the very top pot here at the top of R22. And now you'll see, of course, the digital voltmeter will not change. But if you look, let's see if I can, if you look right here on the display, you're going to see that, that voltage change. See how it's going down? You just want to match the value on your, your uh, um, digital uh, uh, meter there. And so here I'm going to adjust it back up to, um, my fluke should be pretty accurate. And I'm going to match as close as I can to 53.6. See, so there, you know, it might flutter around a little bit. We want to get it to 53.6. See, I decreased it down and then, so there's 53.6 is looking pretty good. Right there, maybe a little lower. It's bouncing up to there you go, 53.6. So, success. Yes. Okay, step three is done there. So we can uh, unhook the multimeter. And I'll turn that display off. Pretty exciting. Uh, oops, wrong, wrong one. I'll turn that guy off right there. And the next one is cake here. We're going to simply, um, I, I think I've got another high-res picture on this next step, too. Let's take a look. Uh, yes, right here. So um, I'm going to turn this display off here. So, so we're going, um, the amplifier, when I received my amplifier a few weeks ago, the default position for the bias jumpers on the RF palette or the RF deck here, PCB, we're in the off position, so we're going to move these two jumpers. This one right here, if you look at the cursor in the video, uh, we're going to move those jumpers to the back, to the pins that are closest to the LD MOS devices, you know, here and here. And so, looking at mine, they're already in that position. And well, I've got it. So in real time here, I'll turn on this video again. So here you can see it right there, right. So these two right here. Just make sure on the, they're on the uh, two pins that are closest to the uh, LDMOS devices. So pretty, pretty straightforward there. So you can check off another box here. Okay, hey, pretty exciting. Um, so now we've done one, two, three, and four. And the last step for this particular video will be, we'll scroll down here to step number five. And this is uh, simply to test the fact that RF is flowing through the amplifier in its uh, normally unpowered state, or powered on to, right? It should be in standby. So I'm going to power off the amplifier. Let me minimize this. Um, so here, I'm in VNC here. And I'm actually going to shut down the Raspberry Pi gracefully. So the application that's running here inside the Linux operating system um, from VNC on the desktop, I can hit Alt 4 just like I was closing down an application in Windows. I get that desktop. So now the amplifier is actually, you know, powered off. If um, I had the um, this display, and you can see that this fan right here is stopped. So and now I'm just going to power down our the uh, Raspberry Pi. And it is shutting down. Let's give it a few seconds here. Now, I mean, it doesn't hurt to power it off because there's any reading or writing going on in OS. But um, I'm a computer guy, so I'm used to shutting things down gracefully that way. So now I'm going to power off the amplifier. Be careful with this switch, right? Because you got some voltage there on that switch. Kind of zap yourself. And so now the amplifier is powered down. Still looking at the front of the amplifier. And again, we're, we're just simply testing. You'll want to make sure you hook up um, your exciter, your, your actual um, transceiver, 100 watt transceiver, ideally, to the amplifier. And then the output on antenna one will go to your dummy load. 
And um, here I'll do a little shaky video here. So here on the back, right, this is coming in from the transceiver, antenna one. I've got it marked red for hot. And um, this is going out to my dummy load up here. And the dummy load is up here. It's actually a, a big bird um, 1KW continuous dummy load, dummy load up there. All right. So everything's good here. And just to show you that we're transmitting correctly, you want to see, uh, you know, a nearly one-to-one -one SWR. This just shows you that all the relays and everything in their normally closed state, whether they're normally open or normally closed, that RF will pass through the amplifier and get to the dummy load. That's, that's all this step is, and then we'll be done here. So I'm going to fire up my virtual um, watt meter, and that doesn't look good. It's like freaking out. Let's see. Let's see if I can get that looking correct. Um, let's see here. Okay. All right. I'll just use one of my my meters here. Okay. Here we go. So here, this is as though you're looking at my LP seven hundred watt meter. And um, uh, you know, if I look over at my transceiver, it's ready to roll over here. We're going to key it up, and I think I've got the power set to. You know, it's here. We'll we'll stick it at you know around 100 watts there, and uh, back to the amplifier. And then I've got my key down here, and we'll send a little little code there, and we'll be done with this section. You can check off step five if um. Uh, what you want to see is power output and an extremely low SWR by default, and um, it's working. Alright, so this is the end of this video, guys. Um, look for video, I'm losing track of the video numbers. Look for video 5 now that will go into the next calibration steps. And I'll combine some of those steps, so it just depends on when I make the video. Um, this will just make it shorter. So 73 for now, and make sure you get on the forum, ask questions, and enjoy your amplifier. 73 for now.